Good day, ladies and gents. Simon Brown here, doing another quick, short, and sharp video. This time, looking at headline earnings per share. I suppose starting in many senses with earnings per share. Get a sense of what earnings per share is. Well, earnings is revenue less all costs. In other words, profit that the company made. So you get a total profit. That's your earnings. Now you want earnings per share. So you take that total profit. You divide it by the number of shares that are in issue for that particular company. Typically, they'll use a weighted number of shares, so if over the period, be it a six-month or a 12-month period, if the number of shares increased or decreased due to share issues perhaps, uh, maybe they did an acquisition where they issued new shares, perhaps they did a rights issue, that would increase the number of shares. Or perhaps they're doing a share buyback, which would reduce the number of shares. So they will use a weighted number of shares and that gives you earnings per share, profit per share. It's an absolute number in that it's defined by IFRS, which is the accounting standard. So when we look at it, we know exactly what we're looking at. That said, nice, but not a massively useful number because of one-off costs and one-off profits. Hence, we go to what we call HEPs, headline earnings per share. Headline earnings per share takes those earnings but removes a profit or losses from abnormal and extraordinary items. That could be, for example, they sold a factory. Now, that is therefore comes in as revenue, but they're not going to sell a factory every year. So that is an extraordinary or an abnormal item. There could be a goodwill write down. In other words, they've reduced the amount of goodwill from, say, a billion to half a billion. That would have an impact on profit. But again, it's not an ongoing process. It's a one-off, abnormal or extraordinary. So the one I always focus on, headline earnings per share, HEPs, because that removes those one-off type of events and gives you a much clearer picture of what the company is actually doing and how it's performing. And certainly HEPs, when, when you hear someone talk about earnings per share, when they're doing price earnings ratio, peg ratios, anything that has earnings per share in it, they're actually using headline earnings per share. You also get uh, continuing operation HEPs. You also get discontinued operation HEPs. This will exclude profit or losses from operations that have been sold or that are held for sale. So a company has, during the period they're reporting, they've sold an asset. It was in those numbers because they owned it for a period of the time, but they'll say, well, Here's our HEPs number, but here's the one without those operations. So we have a continuing operations headline earnings per share from those assets that remain in the business. And that would then be the one to look at because obviously those discontinued, those sold or held for sale assets are not going to be making profit or losses going forward. Diluted headline earnings per share, what this does is it uses the weighted average of shares outstanding. And that outstanding is the important point. So what they've done is they've used the weighted number, as we talked about in a few slides ago, for earnings per share. But what they also then do is they add in any convertible shares and stock options that are out there that will potentially become shares and increase the quantum of shares. So, for example, directors have perhaps got stock options, say it's 4 million shares. Those options might only convert into shares in a year or two, might be three or five years. The point is that they're out there. They are, in a sense, a potential liability to the company in that it will increase the number of shares out there. Now, this is, without a shadow of a doubt, my preferred headline earnings per share because it gives you the, the purest picture of what's happening. In truth, the options that have been granted and the convertible shares out there are in many cases a very, very small quantity as a percentage of the whole. And the one exception might be if there are preference shares that are convertible. But in truth, there are very, very few convertible preference shares at this point in time. I actually can't think of any. So it has a small impact, typically, the difference between headline earnings per share and diluted headline earnings per share, but nonetheless, diluted headline earnings per share, the one that I prefer. And then you get a couple of what I call oddities, normalized headline earnings per share, core headline earnings per share. The point is, these are not official. These are not part of IFRS. There is no stock standard way of reporting normalized or core. 
All of the others we've been talking about in this presentation, there's a standardized. IFRS says, this is how you do it. So different stocks, different companies are going to use it differently. For example, a number of the big banks use normalized HEPs. And what they're doing, they've adjusted for the impact of their black economic empowerment deals. That's fine. And in many cases, they will disclose what they've done and how they've done it. Although you may need to go and read the annual report to really get a sense of exactly what they've done. As a rule, be careful of these numbers. They, because they're, they, you can use them any way you want. So they're really not a, a, an accounting standard. And therefore, we have no idea what we're looking at. And we can't compare apples with apples. Two different companies are going to have use their normalized or core HEPs in different ways. We've got no standardization. So to sum it up, be careful of straight earnings per share because it can be lumpy, because it can have those one-off incomes or those one-off costs that can cause it to move all over the place. My preference, diluted headline earnings per share. When I look at a set of results, that is the number that I go straight to right up front. And frankly, normalized and core headline earnings per share, ignore them. Draw a line through them. Just don't even worry about them. There are some companies out there who only report normalized headline earnings per share they're not giving you a real picture. I'm not saying they're hiding anything. I'm just saying they're not giving me anything that I can fundamentally use, so I'm going to ignore it. And if that is a company's preferred way of communicating, well then I'm not particularly interested in investing in that company.